Setting healthy boundaries is one of the most important things you could do for yourself. Poor boundaries are not only damaging of your relationships, but they can also cause significant issues within yourself. Low self-esteem, a lack of self-respect, powerlessness, and even physical disease in your body. Yep. It's impossible to live a joyful and fulfilling life when you don't know how to set proper boundaries. So in this video, you're going to learn what boundaries are and why they could be so hard to set at first. Then you're going to discover the three energy imbalances that occur when we have weak boundaries. And then I'm going to share my four step simple process to help you start establishing healthy boundaries today. Coming up. Hello, beautiful soul. That intro that you just saw is from my brand new program called Heart Alchemy that's launching in the beginning of February. Heart Alchemy is an eight week program that's going to have weekly group coaching and healing sessions, weekly video modules that'll be released. There are tools, activations, there are bonuses with Heart Alchemy. There's even a community component with Heart Alchemy so you can stay connected with other students as we're all going through the program together. Heart Alchemy is a wonderful way for you to go deeper in your work with me. If you want to work with me beyond my YouTube videos, if you want to go deeper into your challenges to resolve them, if you have pain from the past that you need to resolve, and if you're ready to open your heart into more purpose and to more fulfillment in your life, Heart Alchemy is definitely for you. I'm going to leave a link to the Heart Alchemy email page so that you can join the email list right after you finish watching this video. I will only be launching Heart Alchemy to that email list. So if you want to join us in February, make sure you're on that email list. There's a link in the description box below. Okay. Now on to part one of the video. What are boundaries? <laughs> All right. So before we get into what boundaries are, let's get this out of the way. And that is what boundaries are not. Okay. So boundaries are not barriers. Okay. They are not barriers. Sometimes people get really confused because they think that a boundary is when I kind of put up a wall or a barrier against myself and another person. Usually when we're talking about boundaries, we're talking about people in our relationships with people. Okay. But that is not what a boundary is at all. And if you see a boundary, like a barrier or like a wall, like, you know, think of a castle wall, <laughs> a castle wall, a huge castle wall. It definitely breaks the, the, uh, connection between the people that are inside the castle wall and people that are outside of the castle wall. Okay. So when you think of boundaries as barriers, what you end up doing is you actually pull back. It separates you from connection with other people. And what ends up happening is you isolate yourself because the, you're perceiving a boundary as being a barrier, as being something that separates you from the outside world. That is not what a boundary is at all. So I wanted to get this one out of the way. This is a myth. And in fact, this could be really causing a lot of problems in your life because usually when people don't know how to set boundaries, when they have really weak boundaries, one of the first things they do to set a boundary is they'll set up a wall. And so what ends up happening is this cuts them off from connection to other people and they're not setting boundaries anyways. They're just isolating themselves when they do that. All right. So first things first, a, a boundary is not a wall. It's not a barrier. So let's get that out of the way. And let, now let's go into what a boundary actually is. So here's the simplest definition for me of what a boundary means. Okay. Boundaries are rules of engagement or rules of connection that I have with other people. Okay. I love this definition. It really cleans things up for us so that we can understand that you see how different this is. It's not a wall. It's not a barrier. They are rules rules of engagement that I have with other people. Basically they are rules that I have on how I want other people to treat me, how I accept to be treated. Okay. 
and these rules of engagement or rules of connection, this is what a boundary really is. So you see the difference between this definition. I love this definition so much more. And just by us cleaning up the definition, now you, you're already tapping into sort of, okay, I understand since they're rules of engagement, then, okay, I'm going to start to write these rules down. <laughs> you see? So just by knowing that a barrier, that a boundary isn't a barrier, that it is in fact just a bunch of rules that I have and how I want to engage with the people around me. And I'm going to talk about people because that's usually what boundaries pertain to. It's basically rules of engagement with the outside world. But most of the times we, we need to establish boundaries is with people. That's where we have the biggest problem. So I'm just going to, from here on and talk about people. All right. So th these rules of engagement, I'm going to have these rules of engagement, these rules of connection with other people. And that I love that because it removes the, the tinge of isolation that I would feel sometimes when we're talking about ba uh, boundaries as barriers. Okay. So now with this one, rules of engagement, rules of connection, now you can start to see that boundaries are simply the way that I want to play the game of life with another person around me. All right. That's another way of seeing it. Now let's go over some important features of boundaries so that we're even more clear on what a boundary is. Okay. The first feature that I want to talk about is that boundaries change. Okay. Boundaries change depending on who you are playing with in terms of the outside world. So for example, here's a concrete example. The rules of engagement or boundaries that you have with a coworker are different from the rules of engagement that you have with your partner, for example, right? It makes sense, right? I am, I don't have the same level of intimacy with the coworker that I have with my partner. So obviously the rules of engagement have to be different with different people. Okay. So it's important for you to understand that boundaries, they're not one size fits all. They can't be different uh, levels of intimacy, different closeness that you have with people around you are going to dictate how the rules of, of interaction and engagement are going to be different for you. So when we're setting boundaries, this is another, you know, just leaving already the, leaving you already with the, with a little bit of the homework, setting boundaries. When I learn how to set boundaries, I have to learn how to, how to set different levels of boundaries, depending on who I'm, I'm talking to, whom I'm engaging with. Now, regardless of how different the rules of engagement are with different people. So going back to the example, my boundaries with my coworker, with the coworker are different than the boundaries with a partner. So yeah, the rules of engagement are good. The details of the rules of engagement are going to be different depending on the different people that I'm associating with. But this is not to say that, that there are some relationships where there are no boundaries at all. Okay. So ding, ding, I want to leave this here. This is important especially for people who have problems already with weak boundaries. When I'm saying that the levels of boundary with the coworker are different from the levels of boundary with my partner, I'm not in any way saying that the partner doesn't have any boundaries. I still have rules of engagement with a partner. So what this means is that although boundaries, the level of boundaries change with different people, the foundation is always the same. And that is the foundation of boundaries is a profound feeling of self love and self respect. Ding, ding. Oh my God. The foundation of any boundary is self love and self respect. Okay. So regardless of the different rules that I have with different people, the, the foundation of self love and self respect is always there. Feature number two of boundaries is that boundaries reinforce sovereignty. Oh, so important. Boundaries are basically me exercising my human right to my own sovereignty, my space, my body, myself. Okay. It's me exercising my human right of having my own space, whether it's physical space, whether it's, it's space in my house, it doesn't matter. It's me exercising my human right to my own body, to my own being. Okay. So, so b proper boundaries reinforce sovereignty. The third feature is that boundaries show self love. <laughs> 
So I usually tell people, because sometimes, you know, when, when I ask clients, hey, you know, how's your self-love? Usually the person will always want to say, oh yeah, I love and respect myself. That's the easiest answer. But you want to find out a quick way for you to dip right beneath the bullshit of what your mind says to you. And if you want to quickly assess how much you truly love yourself, here's the easiest way to do it. You're going to look around you and see how other people treat you. That is the easiest way for you to assess self-love because if the people around you treat you like crap, it means that you haven't established healthy boundaries with them. You haven't, you haven't put out those rules of engagement that you have on how other people are going to interact with you. And if you don't set those healthy boundaries and they treat you like crap, really what that is, is it's a sign that you don't love and respect yourself because if you did, you would set up those boundaries to begin with. Okay. So this is a great test for you. Look around you and see the quality of the relationships that you have around you and how other people treat you. If they treat you wonderfully, that's a good indication that your boundaries are probably, probably already. Okay. If there's a bunch of people that just disrespect you, that don't treat you well, then you're already pointing to a lack of self-love, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. The fourth feature of boundaries is that boundaries give power. Okay. This is more of an energy alchemy, uh, 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 feature here, because what happens with boundaries is when I have weak boundaries, basically my energy is being drained by whatever person, whoever I have weak boundaries with. So if I have weak boundaries with everyone in my life, that means that everyone, every single person in my life is draining vital energy or chi from me. And this is why I said in the beginning of the video, right at the start of the video, I was saying that weak boundaries create a lot of problems. And one of the things that I said was it could actually create physical disease in your body. This is why. Because the more that I drain vital energy from my body, the more my body will have the tendency to break down because my body needs a certain level of energy in order to operate optimally and in a healthy way. The moment that my body, and sometimes we do this for years because when we don't have boundaries, we can sometimes have these, this problem for years. And so think about it. Your body has probably been going through a breakdown of vital energy for years before it can, it may actually get sick. Okay. So, so this is really important for you to understand from an energy perspective. It's not just psychology. It's not just psychological what's going on. Boundaries are talked about a lot in psychology, but you know me by now in these videos, I go way deeper than psychology. This is the energy component of it. Weak boundaries drain my energy. The more my energy is drained, the less power I have and the less power I have, this is going to create a lot of problems in my life, including including not just powerlessness, but including my body possibly getting sick from so many years of having energy just drained incessantly. Okay. So boundaries give you power. Super important thing to remember. The stronger your boundaries are, the more you feel powerful in your power and in your sovereignty. Okay. On to part two of the video. Why is it hard to set boundaries? <laughs> okay. So there are a ton of articles and videos on how to set boundaries, but it's mostly again, from a psychology perspective. So there's a lot of advice on communicating your needs, advocating for your space. There's all these kinds of recommendations that are coming mostly from the field of psychology, which is the one that deals most with boundaries. But I want to go into the spiritual aspect of it because one of the reasons why it can be so hard to learn how to establish boundaries is because the, the issue with boundaries is not a psychological one. So it doesn't matter how many psychological techniques you use until the energy aspect is dealt with. You're going to, it's going to be practically impossible for you to set boundaries. All right. And so what's the spiritual issue that's going on? when I have difficulty setting boundaries. Well, from a spiritual perspective, a difficulty setting boundary has to do with energy weakness. Okay. There is an energy weakness within you when you have difficulty setting boundaries. If you're, if you have no problem setting boundaries, that means that your energy is pretty powerful, but the moment you have difficulty setting boundaries, it means there's an energy weakness within you. Now, 
The energy weakness within uh, the person having to do with boundaries, it comes from three places, all right? So I want to talk about three energy weaknesses slash blocks that are occurring within you when you feel like you have difficulty setting boundaries. The first one, probably the most important one, because it's the lowest in the system is I have a weakness in my solar plexus or third chakra. Okay. This is the foundation of boundary issues. And it's the foundation of boundary issues. If you don't know what the third chakra is, here it is. Here's the picture of, the, of all of the chakras. And then let's zoom in on this third chakra. That's your solar plexus right here at the top of your stomach, right before your chest bone starts. The solar plexus is your center for personal power and will. All right. So now you understand why you can't, you can't set healthy boundaries. If this, if this uh, chakra is weak, it's your, it's your chakra that gives you a sense of personal identity unique in the world. Okay. Your sense of me in this world is coming from the third chakra, that solar plexus. It is a vital, vital place of power. And without me having strong personal power and will without me having a strong, um, self identity and self image, I'm not going to be able to establish boundaries because for me to establish boundaries, I need to be in my personal power. All right. So that's the first weakness that occurs spiritually when a person has difficulty setting boundaries is that solar plexus is involved for sure. Now this chakra, this solar plexus generally tends to start to be weakened in your childhood and early adolescence. Okay. And this usually happens when you were raised in a family environment where you may have had a controlling parent a narcissistic parent it doesn't have to be narcissistic. I don't even like to use that word. That's an extreme, but let's say you were raised by parents that were controlling. If you were raised by parents that violated your space, this was very, very common. So I'm not saying this is a judgment on our parents. It was really common for parents to violate children's spaces because not until, until very recently, children were considered property of their parents. It's very common in past generations for us to think of children as ours. That's my child. Okay. As soon as you say that as a parent, as soon as you say, that's my child, basically a follow up with that is I do whatever I want with my child. The moment that you say, I do whatever I want with my child, you are violating their sovereignty. You see, and this has happened for so many generations for so many of us. And it was just because we were in a lower level of consciousness where we assumed that our children were our property. And that's not the case at all. These are very, very beautiful souls that have their own soul path. And so as parents, it's really, really important that a child's space isn't violated, that their sovereignty isn't violated. Now, of course, this is a fine balance, right? Because there's still a dependent child on you. So when I'm saying their sovereignty not being violated, I'm not saying let your kid do whatever they want. That's not what I'm saying. But you understand the energy impact here is, is if you're a parent now to be careful, if you're a parent of small children, to be careful the, of having that mindful balance between responsible parenting and controlling, pushing your will onto your child overly, because what's going to happen is you're going to affect that third chakra of the child. The more controlling you are of your child, the more their third chakra is going to be weakened. And that's the problem. Then it's going to set up a problem for them to set setting healthy boundaries when they grow up. Okay. So, so this is just kind of a side note here that usually that third, that solar plexus chakra starts getting weak, especially if we are raised by controlling parents, if we're raised by violent parents, if our space has ever been violated as a child or an adolescence that can set up a weakness already in that solar plexus. The second energy weakness to occur is at the heart chakra. Okay. So the heart chakra is my center for love and compassion and respect, right? And so if my heart chakra is impacted and it will be impacted when I have difficulty setting boundaries, but I want to go a little bit deeper here. Instead of calling this a weakness at the heart chakra, it's less of an energy weakness. So I'm going to rephrase this. It's less of an energy weakness and it's more that the heart chakra is blocked. 
okay? So less of a weakness and more that it's blocked, but a block also translates into energy weakness anyways. It may seem a little bit like semantics, but I wanted to show you the difference here. It's not so much that the heart chakra is weak, it's that the heart chakra is blocked in this, in this instance. When my heart chakra is blocked, I cut myself off from the feeling of love. Now that may be with others, but the most important aspect here when it has to do with boundaries is if my heart is blocked, I don't feel self-love and self-respect and self-compassion. If I don't feel self-love, self-respect and self-compassion, I will never be able to establish healthy boundaries with others because basically if I don't have love for myself, I'm going to accept treatment from other people that's less than healthy, you see? So I have to be in a place of self-love and self-respect in order to establish healthy boundaries, otherwise I won't get there, right? So this heart chakra block, it plays a significant role when it has to do with setting boundaries. And it's already, now notice this is the second one I'm talking about. So the heart chakra is the fourth chakra. It's the one right above the solar plexus. And so when, by the time that we get to the heart chakra, we've already started the problems of boundary issues with the third chakra, okay? So this is the second weakness to come in, is this heart chakra blocking, which blocks me from self-love. Once I'm blocked from self-love, it's impossible to establish a healthy boundary. The third energy weakness that happens with poor boundaries is I have a weakness at the throat chakra. Oh, right here, here's your throat chakra. So right above, this is the fifth chakra, right above the heart. So we've got problems with third, fourth, and now fifth chakra, the throat chakra. And we have problems with the throat chakra one, because you can understand the throat chakra is the communication chakra. I can't establish healthy boundaries if I don't know how to communicate what I expect from others. I have to be able to communicate how my rules of engagement, right? So speaking of the definition of boundaries again. So I have to be able to communicate those rules of engagement with the outside world. If I can't communicate, it's going to be impossible to set boundaries. All right. But there's another aspect of the throat chakra that I want to talk about too, because sometimes we focus too much on the communication piece of the throat chakra, but that's not all the throat chakra does. Okay. The throat chakra is also significantly involved in the manifestation of things. Okay. So the, the throat chakra, it, it, the way that I like to look at it is the throat chakra breathes life into your dreams, your goals, whatever you want to do. The throat chakra actually helps create. It breathes life into it. I like to look at the throat chakra that way. Okay. So if I not only, it's not only about com communicating my boundaries, it's also about breathing life into those boundaries, being able to establish them in a nonverbal way. It's not just about communication, but it's also about materializing my engagement rules. So here's an example of what that could look like. Let's say that you, part of your boundaries is you like to have your own space in your house. Let's say you're married. Um, let's say you have a family, but you really like to have your own space where you can go meditate, where, where the kids don't go in and throw their toys all over the place. So you establish a room in your house that is mommy or daddy's meditation room. And you put something on the door and you say, no children in here, <laughs> something like that. Okay. I'm just making this up, but I'm coming up with this example because this is an important aspect of you seeing how the throat chakra comes in, even though you're not really communicating, you establish, you design this room, you decorate it, you make it beautiful. You put candles, you have a nice meditation mat on the floor. You make it beautiful that you making that room beautiful for yourself. That's setting boundaries. You see, you're not communicating with anyone at the moment. Yeah. Then you can put a sign on the door and you can say, look, children, husband or wife, this is my meditation room. This is my room. I don't want anybody to go in there. That's my personal space. Okay. Now I'm communicating that to my family. But uh, at the time that I was decorating the room, making it pretty, that was the throat chakra at play also. And it's because the throat chakra is not only the communication chakra, it's also the chakra of breathing life and materializing, helping to materialize my goals and my dreams. Okay. 
So when I have a weak ability to set boundaries, I also have weakness in this throat chakra. That's the third uh, weakness that we have when we have problems with boundaries. So you see how these three weaknesses slash blocks that I just talked about, how they have nothing to do with psychology. They have nothing to do with mental will, with my mind at all. These are energy weaknesses that are occurring lower in my system that have nothing to do with the mind. And let me reinforce again, this is why people can have so much difficulty setting boundaries when they're just using psychology tricks or psychology hacks. They can have a lot of difficulty setting boundaries because until these energy, until the energy weaknesses and blocks are, are dealt with, until they're healed, until they're reinforced, they're, they're uh, not just not reinforced until these chakra weaknesses are developed till you develop these chakras, then it doesn't matter what psychology hacks you use, you won't be able to set boundaries, all right? So now you're really starting to see the depth and the foundation of boundary problems. So now we're gonna get to addressing those issues. Now to part three of the video, how to set boundaries. <laughs> so I'm going to share with you my simple four-step process um, to, to help you kind of work through step by step, try to follow these steps in order because it'll, it'll become easier for you to establish boundaries if you're following these steps in order. All right. So that was a little side note I wanted to leave. Follow these steps in order. Step one is to list boundary violations. <laughs> This is a crucial first step. And the reason that I'm starting with this one is because so many of us, people that have boundary problems, I had boundary problems too. There's just so many people with boundary problems. It's a big issue. But we didn't start having boundary problems now. People that have boundary problems, they've likely had them since they were children because as we just said, that's where the problem starts is in childhood. When your space is violated, when your sovereignty is violated, you start to think that that's normal. And so what ends up happening is for so many of us, we've, we haven't had boundaries since we were children. So we don't even know what the heck boundaries are. <laughs> and so a lot of times we don't know that we have weak boundaries because that's just the way that we've been relating to people our whole lives. So this first step is crucial because it's going to start helping you pick out what is healthy and what's not. And you've got to think about it a little bit. You have to have a lot of self-awareness in this step because you have to start picking situations in your life apart, picking relationships apart so that you can understand in a conscious, self-aware way, whether you have healthy boundaries or not. So I like, I like to, to have this list. I write a lot in this first step. And basically what you're going to do is you're going to start listing boundary violations. Now, how do I know what's a boundary violation if I've never had proper boundaries in my life? And that's where important questions come in. Okay. So I'm going to give you the important questions that will help you start this exercise. The first important question to ask yourself is how would I like the people around me to treat me? How would I like the people around me to treat me? All right. So now you're going to go really, really within and you're going to say, how do I want others to treat me? How do I want others to treat me? And you're going to start writing this down. Well, I want to be treated like this. I want to be given my alone time when I say I need it. I want my friends to reciprocate my friendships. And so they're not just one sided. Okay. So I'm just giving you examples but you're going to write down how you want to be treated. And again, remember by different groups because boundaries are different. So you're going to make a little story about how I wanted to be treated by my partner, how I want to be treated by my coworkers, how I want to be treated by my friends, how I want to be treated by my parents. Okay. You're going to go, the list is going to go on and on. Just think of the people around you, they're different categories, and then you're going to write down how you want to be treated by them. Not how they're treating you now, but how you want. This is you're already establishing the rules of engagement, which is what boundaries are. Okay. So that's the, that's a first important question. Now, a second important question is going to be for you to use to compare to the first question. So in the first question you were asking, how do I want people to treat me? In the second question, you're going to ask, how am I treated by the people around me? Okay. This is another important question. 
So in the first, in the first question, those were my desires. That's how, that's what I want. Now I'm faced with reality. How am I treated by the people around me? And you've got to be brutally, brutally honest here, brutally honest with no excusing. Cause a lot of times when people get to this question, they start excusing others. So they'll say something like, I'm, I'll give you an example because I've heard this so many times with so many clients that I want to give you concrete examples so you don't do this, all right? So sometimes when they start saying, how am I treated? Then let's say they're talking about the partner. How does my partner actually treat me? Um, well, he doesn't talk to me very nicely when he gets home from work, but it's because he's really stressed. You know, he has a really stressful job. So then when he gets home, he's cranky. You see what I just did there? I excused my partner for treating me badly. You see? <laughs> okay. So that's an example. All right. No excuses, no excuses. Be very objective. How am I being treated by others currently? So taking the example that I just shared of a partner that comes home from work and is really, really, uh, you know, just very snippy with you just can sometimes shout at you when he comes from home from work. That's a boundary issue that you're, you're having right there. Okay. So write that down it, write down how people treat you without excusing them. Okay. And I gave the example of the partner, but you could give the example of my coworkers treat me like this. My children treat me like this. My parents treat me like this. My friends treat me like this. Okay. Write down those lists of how these different group of people treat you in general. And then you're going to have a great comparison because you're going to be faced with how people treat you and how you want them to treat you from question one. And then you're going to be able to see very clearly whether your boundaries are healthy or not. The third question that I want you to ask yourself here, it's just this third question is going to take you deeper. All right. And this third question goes something like this. In what specific times have I allowed my boundaries to be violated? Even when I was feeling uncomfortable, oh my gosh, I love this question. In what specific times have I allowed my, my boundaries to be violated, even though I was feeling uncomfortable? Okay. Now, what is this question pointing to? When I'm asking this question, I'm asking you to go into yourself and realize that by you feeling uncomfortable, you were all, your body was already telling you, ding, ding, boundary is being violated, ding, ding. <laughs> and you just weren't listening to it at the moment. Okay. So I'm pointing you to go deeper so you can figure out situations in your life in which you already knew intuitively that your boundaries were being violated, but you stayed there nonetheless. This is a really important question because it can show you the depth, the biggest weaknesses that you have. So maybe let, let's give an example of why this question would be important. Let's say that you have, th you, this has never happened. You've never allowed a boundary to be violated with a, a friend. You're like, that's great. I have never allowed my friendships to do that. But then when you ask this question of your partner, you have a lot of specific instances in which your boundaries have fallen. And so now my question is, wait a minute, that's great that your boundaries with your friends are well, but now we need to work on boundaries with partners because we can't just have healthy boundaries with friends. We need to have healthy boundaries with everyone in our lives. Okay. This is also an important question for you to start seeing instances in which your boundaries can be easily violated because then you'll know next time on how to not to let that happen. So here's a classic example that I get from so many people. It's the classic example of that friend that many people have. I don't, I'm not going to say everyone, but many people have that friend that only calls you when they have something crappy going on in their lives. And they say, Hey, let's go out for coffee or let's go. I want to, I miss you. I want to talk to you. I want to let's meet up, whatever. And you go and you meet up your friend, Sally, and you sit with Sally. And for the next hour, Sally is just dumping all her crap on you. You don't get one word in this conversation. It's just her talking incessantly about her problems. And then an hour later, without you having a word in Sally says, Oh my God, look at the time I've got to go. It was so great to see you. See you later. And she leaves and you are completely drained of your energy because she just dumped all her shit on top of you. And, but here's the thing. Look at this situation. You were feeling uncomfortable with that interaction with Sally five minutes into it. And you stayed for an hour. <laughs> you see, you stayed for an hour. So this is a really classic example of how 
boundaries were being violated, but you stayed there nonetheless. All right. And this is important for you to document because this is going to be a part of the healing aspect of this so that this situation with Sally doesn't happen again. All right. So this third question, uh, writing down specific times in which your boundaries have been violated, even when you have felt uncomfortable, this is going to be really important for you when we get to the part about setting the boundaries uh, more, uh, strongly. So by doing the work in this first step of the process, what I'm doing with all of these questions, with all of this journaling, with all of this pondering and contemplation, what I'm doing with this is I'm creating a deep sense of self-awareness. Self-awareness is crucial in healing. The more aware that I am about whether my boundaries are weak or strong, the more aware I am of this, the more able I am to create actionable solutions to the issues. Okay. So self-awareness is super important. Once you have that self-awareness that this first step is going to give you, now you're ready for step two. Step two is developing the third chakra or the solar plexus. Okay. So we're going to start at the bottom where that, where the issue of boundaries starts. We're going to start at the bottom with that third chakra, with that solar plexus, that weakness in the solar plexus that we were talking about before that needs to be, uh, that needs to be fixed immediately in order for those boundaries to, to start being well established. Okay. So we're going to have to correct the weakness in the solar plexus, the solar plexus energetically, it's a bit different to work with than the other chakras because the solar plexus is a chakra that works like a muscle. I see the solar plexus like a muscle. And so the solar plexus is less, um, it's less, uh, uh, responsive. That's the word it's less responsive to meditation, to just contemplating to, to more passive techniques. Some, some chakras are very responsive to meditation and to energy work and to just being still and visualizing things. The third chakra, the solar plexus, because it's all about personal power, it functions like a muscle, meaning I have to exercise it in order for it to develop. So the first chakra is really about us learning how to hold our power energetically, how to hold our personal power. All right. And we're going to have to do that by exposing ourselves to the outside world. All right. So if you have a tendency to isolate yourself, so when someone violates a boundary of yours, if your tendency is I'm going to run home where I'm by myself and nobody bothers me. If you have the tendency to isolate, we're not doing that anymore when it comes to the third chakra because every time you run home and you isolate yourself, when a boundary is violated, you are just making the third chakra weaker and weaker and weaker because you're removing yourself from the stimulus that the chakra needs in order to exercise. Okay. So that would be like, that would be like you wanting to exercise your leg muscles and you just sit on the couch. <laughs> I just sit on the couch and you imagine your, your, your muscles getting stronger. That can work a tiny little bit because visualization does work, but eventually you're going to have to get up off of the couch and you're going to have to start doing squats or some other exercise to get your legs stronger. It's the same thing with the solar plexus. You need to exercise it with action. Okay. And so, so that's how we start getting to this, uh, solar plexus through interaction with the world, through holding our power in the presence of others. I also like to work with the third chakra, um, uh, affirm with affirmations. I love using affirmations. And affirmations are a little bit more active. I usually say them out loud to even, even make them stronger but you can have some affirmations for this solar plexus affirmations. Like I am powerful. I am a sovereign being. I am a sovereign being. I have my own space. I establish my own space. I am independent. I'm the owner of my body. I'm the commander of my life. <laughs> you see, I'm just giving you a bunch of different affirmations. You can come up with, with any ones that you want, but these are great affirmations for this third chakra. I'm sovereign. I'm powerful. I'm independent. Okay. You start saying these affirmations, the more you work with these affirmations, it's going to help reinforce that that solar plexus chakra, but just having the self-awareness that I'm not going to run away anymore when it's time to establish boundaries, I'm not going to run away. I'm going to exercise this third chakra so that I can know how to set healthy boundaries from here on in. 
If you want to go deeper into third chakra development, I shot a whole video on that. It was specifically for sensitive people, but it's talking all about the third chakra. So I, I'll give you some more techniques in that video. I'll leave a link to that video in the description box below. It's, it's titled, you know, sensitive people. Here's, here's how to deal with harsh energy, but it's all about the third chakra. So I'll leave a link to that video below so you can watch after this one and go deeper into the third chakra. I also have a guided activation, a guided energy activation that I did with a group on YouTube. And that activation is specifically developing sovereignty of the third chakra. So I'm going to leave links that that activation is called the sovereignty activation. I'm going to leave links to my resources, my free resources page in the description box below. So you can do that meditation, that activation after watching this video. That's another great tool to help develop this, this solar plexus. Step three is self-love and self-respect. So now that I've started to work on the third chakra, now that I've started to strengthen that solar plexus, I'm going to move up into the heart chakra. And now it's time for me to come into a position of self-love and self-respect because without that, I cannot establish healthy boundaries. All right. Now, when it comes to working with the heart, having to do with boundaries, I like to develop self-love and self-respect in, in two ways. The first one is to connect to source to connect to the universe, to creator, God, whatever you want to call it, connect to your source through the heart, because the heart is the portal, not only for your soul, but also for your higher self, your connection to all things. The more that you connect to the universe, you connect to your soul, you connect to your higher self, the more that that heart chakra starts to open. And the more that I connect to my soul and to my source, I start to feel what the universe feels for me, which is so much love and honor and respect. And so what ends up happening is I start to feel that love that the universe feels for me. I start to feel it for myself kind of as a consequence, as a natural consequence. All right. So connect to the universe, connect to your source. And, and, you know, I it could do that through meditation. It could be through a walk, walk in the park. It could be through prayer. Some people like to use prayer. However it is start focusing on this heart and connecting to your source, connecting to your soul, connecting to your higher self. You're going to start feeling that love pouring into you. All right. And to go deeper into opening this heart chakra to connection. I also did a guided activation for the heart chakra. It's called the heart chakra activation. And I'm going to leave a link there in that, in that resources page where you saw the other meditation is where this one is going to be. So you can download the heart chakra activation and work with that meditation. That's going to help you. The second way that I love to work with the heart is through affirmations. Okay. So a lot of affirmations, but here's the trick that I like to use with the heart. Uh, this is a pro tip. Okay. There's a couple of things, couple of little pro tips here. All right. The first pro tip is you're going to do your affirmations in front of a mirror. The second pro tip for the heart is that you're going to put your hand on your heart as you're doing the affirmations in front of the mirror. Okay. So those are a couple of pro tips that I love. And then you're going to develop some heart mantras, heart affirmations that you're just going to repeat in front of the mirror. Like I deeply love and honor myself. I deserve to be treated like gold. <laughs> you see, <laughs> I love myself. I deserve to be well treated. Uh, I deserve to receive abundance from the universe. I deserve wonderful things. I live in a benevolent universe. You see, these are all kind of variations of heart mantras and heart affirmations that you could say to yourself that starts to reinforce the self-love and the self-respect that's needed for you to establish proper boundaries. And before I go to step four, there's one affirmation that I forgot for the heart, but I want to leave it here because this one is so important and you're going to understand why in a little while when I get to step four, here is the mantra that I almost left out, but remember to come back to record this. Okay. So here's the mantra. The mantra is again, heart mantra. I honor my own needs. Oh God, this is such a powerful one because we don't honor our needs so many times. And I'm going to get into that in a little bit. I honor my own needs. Oh, such a powerful one. I could feel that just moving through my body. That's how powerful that is. Okay. 
I honor my own needs. Repeat this mantra along with the other ones. This is also a heart mantra to do in front of the mirror. Now to step number four, which is develop the throat chakra, right? So we've been to the solar plexus, then we went to the heart. Now we're going to end here in the throat chakra. So by the time I get through the throat chakra, this is why I have these steps in sequence. By the time I get to the throat chakra, I'm already a bit strengthened in my solar plexus. My heart's a bit open. So I already have a solid foundation. And then when I get to the throat chakra, now it's time to communicate my needs, to communicate my boundaries in a clear way, to help materialize my boundaries in a clear way. All right. So by the time I get to the throat chakra, I will know how to communicate my boundaries in a direct, clear way. Okay. And this is going to be huge. I also at the throat chakra, I know how to communicate my boundaries in a guilt and shame free way. Holy moly. This one's huge. So I want to go deeper into this one. Okay. Shame and guilt free. This is especially for all the ladies that are watching this video, because for so many of us, especially women, we have been templated to put other people's needs in front of our own. Okay. This is so problematic. So, so problematic. And we're only now starting to clean this up. Okay. Other people's needs are not more important than your own. Even if you are a mother of children, this can be shocking sometimes to hear, but that's true. Okay. And the example that I use is the, the common example when you go flying and they're doing the emergency procedures and let's say you're flying with your children next to you. But if you listen to what that flight attendant says in the emergency procedures and inst instructions, that flight attendant will always say, in the event of depressurization in the cabin, the oxygen masks will fall. You are to put your oxygen mask on first before you put your children's on first. All right. This is the perfect metaphor for what I'm talking about here. Your children's needs, even if you're a mother, your children's needs should not come before yours because your needs are foundational for how your children uh, do in life. Okay. Your children depend on a beautiful, healthy, powerful mother. Okay. And if they don't have that, you're already doing them a disservice. Okay. So I really wanted to focus on this, especially, I'm not saying that this is all, I'm not saying this is just for women. So if you're a guy watching this right now, you can have the same issue, which is of putting other people's needs before my own. If I do that, then look what's going to happen. When I try to establish a boundary from a place of thinking that other people's needs are more important than mine. And I try to establish a boundary. I am going to inevitably feel guilt and shame for doing it. Why? Because I'm not, and my mind is saying, I'm not supposed to put this boundary because that person is more important. That person's needs is more important than mine. And so if you believe that as soon as you try to establish and communicate a boundary, you're going to feel guilt and shame. <laughs> so here's the pro tip on this. If when you get to the throat chakra, you try to establish your boundaries, you try to communicate with them and you immediately feel guilt or shame. It's time to go back to step two and step three. Okay. Step two and step three. So you're going to stop immediately your work on the throat chakra. You're going to say to yourself, Holy moly. I just tried to use my throat chakra to establish a boundary, but I felt guilt and shame, which means that I still have weakness in my solar plexus. And especially I still have a problem with self love because if I had self love and self respect, I would never feel guilt or shame in establishing boundaries with others. All right. So you go right back to step two and step three. It's not a failure. If you feel guilt or shame, I'm saying this to you in a loving way, because this may happen to you, especially if you've been templated as a woman to put other people's needs before your own. All right. So I'm just giving you this here as a little side note. If you do feel guilt and shame, you're just going to go back to step two and step three, and then you'll come back to step four again. All right. So this is an important note on guilt and shame. If it's felt, it needs to be worked through in the lower chakras. So let's say that you don't have guilt and shame. You've already dealt with that. You're in a pretty good position. Your solar plexus is strong. Your heart is strong. And now we're going to go into the actual establishment of boundaries using the throat chakra. I'll give you some recommendations on how that's actually done on the ground, right? In real life, practical examples. 
One of them is you're going to start communicating your boundaries in a very clear way with the people around you. So let's give an example. We re, we've been using a ton of examples. Let's give the example of your friend, Sally. <laughs> okay. Your friend, Sally, that only calls you when she wants to throw all her problems on top of you. She doesn't contribute at all to this friendship. And so, okay, now I'm up to my throat chakra. Uh, I'm going to grab the phone. I'm going to call Sally and we're going to meet up because I want to have a conversation with Sally. All right. That's literally what you do. That's your throat chakra working. You grab the phone, you say, Sally, let's meet up. Um, maybe Sally will say, Oh, I don't have time. If Sally is that type. So then all you have to do is you're just going to wait for Sally to call you. Cause she's going to call you when she has problems again, right? She's going to make time for you when she needs it. Okay. You're going to go out to lunch with Sally. You're going to sit there and you're going to say, Sally, I really need to have, before you start, I really need to have a conversation with you. I don't feel that this friendship, I feel this friendship is one-sided. You know, have you noticed that you only call me when you have problems? When we go out to lunch, you're talking basically the whole time. I never say anything. This friendship is not reciprocal and it needs to be reciprocal from here on in, or I won't be able to continue it. Boom. This ladies and gentlemen is throat chakra, immediately directly establishing a healthy boundary with a person with whom I did not have a healthy boundary before. Okay. So this is an example of clear communicate. This is what I need from you, Sally, or this is what I need from you spouse. Okay. So that's, that's one way to do it. All right. Is to clearly communicate your needs to the person that you're, that you're establishing these rules of engagement with. The second way to use uh, this throat chakra in a healthy way is to eliminate certain people from your life. And this could be a hard one sometimes. And I include even family members in this. Okay. When it comes to boundaries, sometimes the biggest violators of our boundaries are actually people who are our family because they're the ones that raised us to be that way in the first place. And so we can have some of the most toxic connections actually with our biological family. And what I say to clients and I'm saying to you now is these rules of boundaries should apply to everyone in your life, including your family. Just because someone is your blood doesn't mean that they should treat you and you should allow them to treat you poorly. Okay. And I can't tell you how difficult sometimes this is. Now, when I say eliminate toxic people from your life, I'm not saying that that person's bad, but at the end of the day, when you reach a place of self-love and self-compassion and self-respect, you're going to be very mindful of the preciousness of your life. And you're going to only want in your life, the people that are good for you. Okay. Why would I want people in my life that aren't good for me? Why does that make any sense? <laughs> you see? And so you're going to learn to eliminate people people from your life, because sometimes this may be necessary because guess what? I may go out to lunch. Let's use Sally as an example. I may go out to lunch with Sally and I have that conversation and I very clearly establish the boundaries with her and Sally could get pissed off with me and she could just go into victim mode and she could just say, you're so horrible saying all these things and all of this. And she could just go into crybaby mode. And then five days later, Sally is back to doing what she used to do. Exactly the same thing as if you had not said anything, what are you going to do then? You're going to go back to the, to the lunch and let Sally do the same thing that she's been doing. No, once you establish and communicate your boundaries, if the other person continues to violate them, sorry, peace out, Sally, <laughs> peace out, Sally. It was great to have a friendship with you, but I'm not doing one-sided friendships anymore. I'm done with that. That's that knowing how to say no as a, as a full complete sentence. Okay. Now I realize that this elimination process can be difficult with closer relationships. So I'll give you an example. This has happened to me quite a few times because I work with clients who have a lot of problematic pasts. So I've had quite a few clients that one of the hardest things for us to work through was that client had been abused by a family member. So for example, I remember one client who had been sexually abused by her father. And because she was from a culture where your family is supposed to be everything, she was having difficulties. She came to me because she wanted me to teach her how to be able to be in family functions with her father there. She wanted to learn how to, how to forgive her father so that she could stay in a relationship with him because her culture forced people to do that. Even though he had sexually abused her, you see, 
How difficult is this? Can you imagine this poor soul? And if you have gone through any of this, can you imagine the torture of trying to force yourself to stay in some kind of connection with an attacker, with someone who abused you? This is really hard. And so what I want to, the image that I, the, the message that I want to say to you is beautiful soul. If you have any toxicity like this in your family, it is, there is nothing wrong with eliminating those family members from your life. This is a part of creating boundaries. And there's a lot of self love in that not putting yourself in toxic, horrible situations is self love and self respect. Okay. So I wanted to leave this here. I'm not saying you have to eliminate everybody, but I'm saying you have to learn to eliminate the people that are necessary to be eliminated with your life from your life regardless of if we're talking about a family member like a mom or a dad or a partner okay once you start to learn how to establish boundaries a lot of things are going to change in your life and yeah you know you may have to eliminate certain people from your life but don't be afraid of that because when you learn how to set healthy boundaries and you eliminate whoever needs to be eliminated the universe is going to give you tenfold in return. Okay. In terms of better relationships and better connections that, that will respect your boundaries, that will respect your rules of engagement that will love and cherish you. All right. So this is another important way to, to use that throat chakra in the establishment of boundaries. The third way to use this throat chakra is that aspect of the throat chakra. That's not just about communicating, but it's about manifesting, breathing life into your goals and into your desires. And so here, what I often work with clients, especially with women, this is an issue that a lot of women have when they come, when they reach me, and that is establishing your independence. Okay. Because here's the scenario that happens with some clients that reach me. They are, and I'm using, I'm using again, the example of a woman, but it doesn't mean you could be a man completely dependent on your partner, for example. All right. But the scenario I'm going to use here is the most common. And that's a woman who's financially dependent on her husband. Okay. So what happens here? The person will come to me and they'll say, I don't know, you know, how, how do I, how do I establish proper boundaries? Uh, you know, I live with a narcissist and I'm stuck with this person. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, why are, why are you stuck? What, why are you stuck? And one of the first questions that I ask people when they, when they say this to me, how do I, how do I deal with this situation that I'm stuck in? One of the first questions that I ask people that kind of throws them for a loop, but this is an important question is I ask them, are you a dependent child or is the other party a dependent child? <laughs> And if they say, no, I'm an adult, my husband's an adult. Like, what are you talking about? The reason I'm asking this is if you are not a dependent child, then you are not stuck anywhere. Okay. But then the person will say, well, I am kind of stuck because, you know, when I got married, my husband didn't want me to work. And so I haven't worked, so I don't have any money. I depend on him financially. You see the problem that has established itself here. Of course, the husband then can be freer to violate boundaries because he has control over the spouse, you see, and that's a lot harder. It's a lot harder to establish a boundary when the other person, when you depend on the other person, and this is where the independence comes in, establish more independence independence in your life. Now I'm not saying that this occurs in every situation where, where one person is depending on the other. Okay. There are a lot of situations of very, very beautiful, balanced relationships where the partner doesn't control the partner that's not working. Okay. So I'm not saying this is a, this occurs uh, with every partner, with every relationship that's only one income family, but I'm saying I'm giving this as an example that any time that you are dependent on someone else, then that person, it could be easier for them to violate boundaries and it could be harder for you to establish those boundaries when you are dependent on them. Okay. So try and extricate yourself from any type of dependence from any type of control that the other person may have on you, extricate yourself from those situations. So you're standing more in your independence. The more that you stand in your independence, the more you manifest that independence, then it'll be a lot easier to establish boundaries. All right, beautiful soul. That is it for this video. Let me know in the comments below. Is it hard for you to establish boundaries? I want to know all about it in the comments below. Click here to subscribe to my YouTube channel or head over to my heart alchemy page so you can join the email list and join our coaching program in February. And don't forget these videos that I talked about here. This will be great for you to continue your viewing. All right, beautiful soul. I love you. I'm out.